Financial tracking applications involve a lot of numbers. And typically, these are apps that are going to do a ton of math for their users so that they don't have to. From summarizing monthly spends to calculating a percent change of an account balance to alerting users when a budget threshold has been met. There's a lot of automation happening with numbers, and you need to have a strong command over this kind of logic. Now, this is an area where if you don't know what you don't know, it's easy to create formulas that either don't work well or don't work at all. Here are the pitfalls we see when it comes to working with calculations. Inefficient aggregations of a list of values. For example, getting the total spend of a user's travel expenses broken down by month. So every time they pay for something that's travel related, that's one transaction. So gathering all of those up, summing them up, breaking it down by date so that they can see what their trends are. There are several things happening here, right? We're filtering by date, we're filtering by category, by user, of course, and, and adding it all up. What if you want to compare it to the previous month or take a bigger date range and compare it to the previous uh, period of time that came before it? Depending on your data structure, even your front-end design and plugins, there are many ways that that kind of formula can be structured improperly, and only a few ways that will really keep things optimized for scale. Aside from that, it's easy to want to save every single calculated value in your app's database. Be careful with this. Every change you make to your app's database will cost you some workload units. Remember that you can do real-time calculations and store results in custom states. You can also refer to previous workflow actions to access those values to stay efficient as well. Of course, every app will present different scenarios, but keep an eye on your workload consumption and look for opportunities to reduce the number of times that you're modifying the data records or doing full database search queries. And instead, try to replace those with custom states and more efficient list management. Becoming proficient in logic, especially when a variety of math formulas are involved, can take some time. As a tip, just get your feature to work first, right? If it's not working, you don't have a starting point for optimizing it. Once it's working, measure its workload consumption. You can do this in the app metrics tab of your app editor. You might need to alter your database structure a bit, write the dynamic expressions in a different way, or pass data around on the page in a different way. Do this in layers, just step-by-step, step. build, measure, learn. And you'll see a stable experience coming together for your user.